It's the fishing invention of the century. It's rod, reel, line, barber, hook, the whole thing. Well, now take down your fishing pole and meet me at the fishing hole. I can't think of a better way to pass the time of day. Rod Mob. Your Northern California Fishing Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. I'm Scott. And I'm Sarah. And we're coming to you from the Rod Mob Treehouse here in Portola Valley. What? No comment? I got nothing. Well, there were some horses in the parking lot when I pulled in. Here in Horses in the Parking Lot, Portola Valley. <laughs> it's Friday, June 13th, 2013 and you're tuned into the Rod Mob. This is episode 58 of your weekly Northern California Fishing Podcast. Well, this week we've got guide Rick Kennedy from Tight Lines Guide Service on the show. Kenny Priest joins us to talk about the off-the-hook salmon action coming out of Eureka. You know, there's also been a lot of hot reports on lings out of Fort Bragg. And Anthony Caresco of AC Fly Fishing updates us on the Sac, the McLeod, and Klamath Rivers. The lower Sac is still kicking out the rainbows. And speaking of trout, we've got some great reports out of the Eastern Sierra. Bridgeport Reservoir is wide open. All right, so we'll get to the week's best bites in a bit. But first, let's kick things off with the news. Sarah, what do you got? Here's Sarah with the latest headlines. Well, first off, we want to announce the winner of our Goat Head Gear Soul Spikes giveaway this week. Big congratulations to Tony Varela. Tony will be getting a free Soul Spikes combo pack from Goat Head Gear, which will come in handy as Tony tells us he's about to head out on a big fly fishing trip across five states. We look forward to hearing how the Soul Spikes work out for you, Tony. And in the headlines, five West Coast senators sent a letter to President Obama on Monday stating their opposition to the proposed pebble mine in Bristol Bay, Alaska. The senators represent California, Washington, and Oregon, and in their letter they cited the EPA's recent assessment of the mine, which says it will destroy the salmon habitat. Their letter states, If anyone doubts the devastating impacts of losing salmon fisheries, they need look no further than California. In 2008 and 2009, California's salmon fishing industry lost thousands of jobs and millions of dollars due to a catastrophic drop in salmon populations. The senators also highlighted the importance of Bristol Bay to western states' economies, saying Washington, Oregon, and California benefit from $674 million in economic activity from Bristol Bay salmon fishing and processing. This economic activity fuels approximately 12,000 seasonal jobs and another 10,000 salmon-related industry jobs across the United States. A formal proposal for the mine has yet to be submitted, but the EPA has already assessed the damage that could happen for each of the three possible proposals. This week, West Marine announced that the Golden Gate Salmon Association is one of the 2013 winners of the Marine Conservation Grants. Grants were awarded to organizations throughout the U.S. and Canada who are working to improve and protect marine habitat, which is a key part of West Marine's mission. And the focus of this year's awards is on projects that enhance marine habitat, engage anglers in data collection, and educate anglers about barrow trauma. GGSA won a grant to continue funding science used to improve freshwater habitat for salmon in California's Central Valley. This work is paying off by improving water management practices to complement salmon migration and spawning in the Sacramento River and its tributaries. GGSA Director John McManus says, We're very grateful to West Marine for this grant and for all of its support to rebuild and maintain healthy salmon runs in California. We will use these funds to continue making the sound scientific arguments for better water management practices in our rivers so that salmon and communities that rely on salmon benefit. Congratulations to the Golden Gate Salmon Association on being awarded this grant, which will benefit all of us. Well, we've reported on the increase in the number of women anglers lately, so I suppose it was only a matter of time. Apparently, there's a new trend for couples in western Pennsylvania, fly fishing dating. The Foggy Mountain Lodge in western Pennsylvania has started a trout trail date night, and it's been a sold-out show. Couples pay about 65 bucks, which includes equipment, instruction, and dinner. They get some brief instruction on the art of fly fishing, are shown some techniques, get in a few practice rounds with coaches, and then hit the pond. Afterwards, the couples have dinner at the lodge's restaurant. So who knows? Maybe this will become the latest trend. 
So, Bachelorette number two, what fly would you use on the Trinity River? <laughs> well, in any case, I think this sounds better than speed dating. Bachelorette number three, what size waders do you wear? All right, switching gears. One of the top guides in Northern California is Rick Kennedy of Tightline's Guide Service, and we're really excited to have him on the show. Scott spoke with Rick earlier today. Rick, thanks for joining us on the show today. It's a pleasure to have you. Can you start with giving us a little background on yourself and talk about some of the great trips that Tightline's Guide Service offers? Hey, you bet, Scott. We, uh, I actually started guiding in 19, 1996, I guess, the spring of 1996, so going on, I guess, 16, 17 years now. And I started, when I first started guiding, I guided pretty much the Stampede Stampede area, you know, Donner, Boca, Stampede, and then also Eagle Lake, and then gradually went over to Davis and came down to the river and did some Feather River and Sacramento River stuff. Um, down, you know, around 2000, I guess, I guess it was about 2000 uh, when I was down doing a lot of stuff on the river. And then it uh, didn't take long. I was back up on, back up the hill, kind of, I kind of like the high elevation stuff. And so I spent a lot more time up there, uh, the Eagle Lake, Stampede area, all that, that country. Um, basically guiding for, for trout, kokanee, um, a little bit of Mackinac stuff. And then uh, a couple years ago, I decided I was going to, uh, I was going to go over, back over and, and fish Tahoe a little bit. So I started doing some trips on Tahoe. And, but there's just nothing like the river. I mean, I just, uh, that's my favorite. I mean, the fish you catch on the river, those kings, it's a whole lot different, obviously, than catching a, a fish out of the lake. You, you definitely know when you got something on there. And it's just, it's just a change of pace. So I actually, uh, had an opportunity to have a new boat built and I'm, I'm having a, a, a new, 23 foot rogue jet built for me that's pretty much set up just mainly for the river stuff but i but i i did add some uh you know lake options to it too and gonna have some downriggers and that kind of stuff so i can still do the stuff i've always done but my main focus here coming up uh, starting july 16th is going to be the the sacramento feather rivers and so I'll, I'll be pretty much focusing on that and then um then this fall i'm going to go back up and do some uh uh, back up to the Eagle Lake and spend some time up there, not only trolling but fly fishing, which we used to do a lot of uh, in years past up there, and kind of go back to some of the stuff I used to do, you know, a few years ago. Very cool. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been following the photos of your boat on on Facebook page. It looks looks really great. Congratulations on that. Thank you. So, how's the season going for you so far? How would you rate things? Uh, you know, it's been great. Uh, the one thing I, I can tell you is the uh, for some reason this year, and everybody I talked to, a lot of the other guides I talked to, have agreed that the wind has just been crazy this year. Um, I uh, I had some trips on the books that I um, that I didn't want to just um, you know sub out to somebody else or something. So I I actually tied in with a friend of mine, Brian Ricucci, um, owns Big Daddy's Guide Service, and me and Brian have been working together for a lot of years. And so I uh, I, I actually got Brian in his boat, and we did a trip on Tahoe. Uh, uh, I guess it was Tuesday of this week, and man, I'm telling you, I don't know that I've ever seen it so rough. It was just just beat us to death, and I I, I came home the next day, I was just just bruised up and sore. I mean, it, it was just literally throwing me from one side of the boat to the other, and so uh, you know, you get those kind of days. But the wind is the wind's been tough this year. Other than that, it's been a great season. Davis Lake, we've caught some beautiful fish on Davis this year. I'm glad to see that lake, you know, back and putting out some quality fish. And you know, Tahoe's got the the nice Mackinac and some nice browns and rainbows and just uh overall it's been a pretty good pretty good season so far but again i just can't wait to get to the river uh looking backwards uh, you've been out at uh Berryessa and stampede you got any reports for those yeah you know i haven't fished Berryessa for probably about a month i guess uh, but Berryessa is definitely putting out some nice kokanee probably the biggest in the state that i'm aware of anyway um and then you, you know you've always got the kings and um so Berryessa has been doing doing well um stampede uh, Donner been putting out a lot of kokanee, but uh, just the the size is uh, you know pro- average probably 12 to 14 inches. Where you know you get down to Barry S, you're talking 17, 18 inches in some cases and bigger. So you know it just kind of depends on what you want to do. If you want to drive down there in that, the valley or stay up in high country, and yeah, the the Barry S is probably the place to go for kokanee this year. Yeah, great. Uh, I have a I have a selfish question. I'm I'm headed to uh, Eagle Lake for the first time at the end of June. Uh, what can you tell me about that? Oh man, uh, you know Eagle is it's probably one of my favorites. Always has been, um, and, and 
it's just I pretty much fish Eagle Lake the same way uh, no matter what time of the year I go. I like to pull um, I like to pull grubs uh, by themselves, uh, about you know 150 feet behind a boat or so uh, on a downrigger, a couple feet down, depending on the water temperature and stuff, obviously. But uh, that uh, and orange seems to be the the number one color for me on Eagle Lake. Uh, I know some guys that are fly fishing right now; they're doing really good fishing under. Uh, uh, an indicator over around Shrimp, Shrimp Island. If I was going to be, if I was launching there tomorrow, I probably would head for uh, one of two places, either what we call the Broccoli Tree area, which is uh, around the outside of Pelican Point, toward on the youth camp side of Pelican Point. Uh, fish those rocks in there, or else I'd go down to Shrimp Island and fish that over there. There's a little 30-foot slot over there by Shrimp Island you can do really good in uh, if the water warms up. But Definitely orange. That's that's your color of choice. Cool. All right. Great, Rick. Uh, so uh, for these upcoming trips, how do our listeners get a hold of you and uh, book a trip with Tight Lines? Um, you know, I just just launched our our new web page a couple. I guess it's been about a week now, and you can check us out on the web page, which is fishtightlines.com. F i s h t i g h t l i n e s dot com, or you can give us a call toll free at eight 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 nine seven five. 0990 and we also uh, try to keep uh, as, as active as we can on Facebook and um, you know you can follow us on Facebook also yeah I, I think you got you have a great Facebook page it, um, it's uh, updated with a lot of great stuff and I recommend you guys check that out also um, you have a, a newsletter too we can subscribe to right absolutely you can subscribe to the newsletter and I try really hard because we all we all have been um, the recipients of you know those those emails that you get three a day of, and I sure. I, I probably send out uh, uh, one sometimes two a month if things are changing, but I don't I don't send one out unless I got you know something's going on I want to tell you about or something's breaking wide open or something's going on. So try not to fill your email box up with that kind of stuff. Well, that's it for the headlines. Now for some tight lines. Here are the latest reports on the best Northern California fishing. Starting with saltwater, for an update on the North Coast, here's Kenny Priest. We finally got some really good weather up here. The uh, wind is laid down, and the ocean is really nice. I think it's going to be three feet for the whole weekend. So this is the first time in a couple weeks that we've actually had some really good weather. Um, the boats have been going out the last couple of days out of Eureka and Trinidad. Basically a wide open bite. So as soon as you can get out there, you know, these guys are getting limits and as fast as you could catch them, as many as you could catch. Wow. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. That's what I've been hearing. It's just been been off the hook up there. Yeah, it's really good. And the thing is now we have um, some silvers showed up. We have a bunch of shakers out there. We have some two-year-olds, some jacks. We have some three-year-olds. And we have some four-year-olds and probably some five-year-olds. There was at least two 30-pounders that I know of that were caught this week in the last couple days. So it's basically pretty uh, nonstop action right now. Wow, it sounds like that's the place to be. I I think so. Just like last year, um, you know, it's it's as good as last year. Maybe a little bit, you know, off a little bit, but the fish are bigger. So I think everybody's pretty happy about that. So you're saying they're basically hooking up the minute they drop these lines in the water, is it does, are they taking bait, lures? Is there any hot, hot offerings that the salmon are liking? Not really. You know, I think, um, you know, a lot of guys like to cut plugs. A lot of guys will use Apex. Um, the charter boat guys are, are steadfast on bait, and they seem to do the best. doesn't really seem to matter. I would have to have to side towards bait. There's just so many fish out there. The schools are so large. It doesn't really matter. Cool. What? Uh, how about any other? Is there any other fishing going on? It would just have some halibut or anything like that? You know, the, the thing about having some nice weather at the calm ocean is you'll be able to go for halibut now. Before, you know, the seas were seven, eight feet, you know, with the current that was pretty fast. So it makes it really tough to go for halibut. But once that ocean lays down like it is now, you know, that opens up to halibut. So I'm sure a lot of people will be fishing for halibut again this weekend. You know, it opens up the jetty fishing because the surf is obviously down. You know, the water's probably cleared up. Um, it opens up fishing off the beach for red tail perch. So it really does, you know, that it, we're very dependent on a, on a very calm ocean. So once that happens, there's all kinds of opportunities. And for more info on Fishing the North Coast, be sure to check out Kenny Priest's Fishing the North Coast Facebook page and his column Fishing the North Coast in the Eureka Times Standard at www.times-standard.com slash fishing the North Coast. The Fort Bragg fleet is still seeing great lingcod action and finding limits of rockfish. 
Salmon reports have been mixed. Rock Fishing in Bodega Bay has excellent reports, NorCal Sport Fishing Adventures. They've been posting some great reports for rockfish, lings, and salmon on our Facebook page. Out of San Francisco, the steady rockfish and salmon bite continues off the San Mateo coast and out at the Farallons. Boats are also targeting sand dabs. Rod mobber Scott Pearson was out last Sunday on the El Dorado out of Berkeley Marina, and they hooked up with limits to 28 pounds. Striper and perch are being caught from the beaches around Pacifica. Half Moon Bay charters are reporting a slower salmon bite and running into some jellies and silvers. Rock fishing trips out of Pillar Point are producing good numbers. In Monterey Bay, the salmon bite has been generally slow, and most boats are targeting rockfish, rock cod, and lings. Chris's fishing and whale watching out of Monterey has been finding lots of rockfish off Point Sur. In the Santa Cruz area, the action is good around the Lighthouse, Natural Bridges, and Capitola. Some halibut were caught off Seal Rock and the Mile Buoy, and a few sea bass reports came from the Pleasure Point area. Anglers at the wharf in Santa Cruz are hooking lots of shiner and smelt. There's been a lot of shark action inside the San Francisco Bay. Looks like most boats are having productive days and are hooking many species. Rod mobber Wes Owens was fishing off Tiburon this week and caught a couple nice rays while targeting leopard sharks. Boats are targeting bay rockfish when the ocean is too rough, and some halibut were caught this week at Red Rocks, Alcatraz, and Angel Island. Live bait is available in San Francisco. Bass fishing is great throughout the Delta. Tracy Oasis and Lads Marine are producing some nice fish. And the good striper action continues too. Rod Mobbers John and Jonathan Politis got into some nice Delta catfish last week. And here's Delta shallow trolling legend Clive Wands with an update. I've been off the water for a while. Back on fishing. I'll give you two days here. Fished above the Rio Vista Bridge. Uh, everything north of the bridge on Tuesday. Couldn't get below the bridge because of the wind. Uh, still a lot of fish around. We picked up uh, nine keepers, up to 13 and a half pounds, turned the 13 and a half back, hadn't spawned out yet. Very good fishing. The Delta still has stripers. Then we went to the ocean, went out on the Salmon Queen, three of us, and uh, we ended up catching 14 fish, a couple over 20 pounds. Talk to you later, bye. Leave your fishing report on the Rod Mob Hotline. 855 Rod Mob 1. Now let's take a look at the lakes. Lake Shasta got a trout plant this week, and reports are that anglers are hooking some nice sized rainbows trolling off O'Brien, Digger Bay, Bridge Bay, and the dam. Apexes and hoochies behind sling blades are the ticket. Good bass fishing continues. Lots of small bass are being taken from the shoreline. Lewiston Lake is a good spot for trout right now. Fly fishers are having success with midges and leech patterns. At Lake Almanor, trollers are having luck with rainbows, browns, and kings using crawler-dodger combos at 40 feet down. Eagle Lake is still kicking out some nice trout. The west side of the lake, south of Pelican Point, has been good for trollers. Rod mobber Michael Smith was out at Eagle Lake and hooked some trout using cast masters and worms at 15 to 20 feet. And Sierra Drifters Guide Service has been been posting some shots of trophy trout daily from Eagle. Looks like they've been crushing it. I can't wait to get out there next week. Kokanee fishing is very, very good at Lake Berryessa right now. Good spots are the east side of the Big Island and Ranch House, and bass are gathering in the bays and pockets. Catfish are active at Lake Sonoma, and largemouth bass are being hooked in the main body and Warm Springs area. At Lake Oroville, coho are on the bite for trollers at the Green Bridge. The bass bite has slowed from the high heat. A report from Western Outdoor News says that trout fishing at Folsom Lake was on fire for some anglers last week. Guide Big John Enos was catching 13 to 16 trout in outing, fishing up the North Fork in front of the porta potties in Dyke 8. Some landlocked king salmon were being caught too. Patient bass fishermen were catching some nice fish by slowly working Carolina rigged robo worms and three inch grubs over rock piles and points. The staff at Collins Lake reports that trout limits are still plentiful. Most are caught from a boat in deeper water or off the dock at night. Anglers at Collins are getting some nice bass and catfish too. Rod mobber Michael Brady was out at Kent Lake in Marin earlier this week and he posted on our Facebook page a fat picture of a bass he caught there. In the East Bay, San Pablo Reservoir continues to plant catchable sized lassen trout and the bite is good. Top spots are the shoreline at the main recreation area, pines, the tower, and across the other side at Sandy Point. The bass bite is picked up for anglers using drop shots. Catfish have started biting on nightcrawlers, anchovies, and shrimp at the boat launch shoreline area. 
The crappie bite has been good on jigs, and they're nibbling at the boat launch area or the oaks. The south end at the Lafayette Reservoir is still producing good trout fishing, and the bass bite is picked up in Harry's Cove. Anglers are using worms and plastics for bass and power bait and cast masters for trout. A catfish plant is coming to Lafayette in July. Recent trout plants at Los Vaqueros Reservoir are keeping the bite steady. Shore fishing is good with power bait. The bass bite at Lake Del Valle is picked up. Both smallmouth and largemouth bass are active in Swallow Bay. The catfish bite is decent. The trout and striper bite is slow. A recent trout plant at Shadow Cliffs is producing hookups for trollers. Catfish are being taken from the shore. Kiosk Cove at Quarry Lakes has been a great spot for trout. A recent trout plant has helped some anglers get their limits. Green power bait is a good offering at Quarry Lakes. At Coyote Reservoir this week, rod mobber Zach Allen is cut a nice, fat, seven-pound bass. You can check out our Facebook page to see a picture. And in the mother load, Glory Hole Sports staff reports that fishing has been good this week at New Malonis. Trout have moved out to the deeper, cooler water. The fish are feeding in 40 to 60 feet of water on the main lake points near the Old River Channel. Night fishing anglers are catching limits of fat, healthy trout under a submersible light. To catch them, try using live minnows, mini jigs, power bait, and crawlers. For trollers, the staff recommends the new Rappelis Scatter Rap Lure. Bake anglers have been catching a few trout using power egg, crawler combos, or cast masters. The early morning bass bite has been good at Malonis. The fish are primarily feeding on large bells of shad. And the good kokanee action continues at New Malonis. Trolling apex and hoochies with shoe peg corn is producing limits. Good fishing continues at Lake Amador. Trout, crappie, and bluegill are on the bite. And bass are being taken off the main lake points. The catfish bite is on at Lake Comanche. Someone got a 16-pounder last week. The North Shore Campground in Narrows are hot cat spots using night crawlers, chicken livers, or anchovies. New Hogan Reservoir has been good for stripers. Anglers are scoring by trolling anchovies off Deer Island, the Scout Camp, and the Dam. Fishing is good at Lake Don Pedro. Trollers are getting a good mix of trout, salmon, and kokanee. Shore anglers are hooking bass and trout. And we got a great Facebook post this week from rod mobber William Stubblefield. The picture he posted was a lunker bass his daughter caught and released at Woodward Reservoir last weekend. Good reports are coming out of Lake McClure. Trollers are scoring limits of trout and the bass are active along the shore. A recent trout plant at McSwain Reservoir perked up the bite for both trollers and bank anglers. Power bait and crawlers are producing. In the Sierras, great fishing continues at Lake Tahoe for max and trout. And we're starting to see some reports of kokanee. At Donner Lake, kokanee fishing is still good for trollers working between China Cove and Loch Levin. Pink and orange lures at down to 65 feet have been producing. Max are down deep and also near the boat launch looking for planters. Shore fishing for rainbows is good off the West End piers. Lake Stampede got a trout plant this week. Fishing for kokanee and max has been fair. For an update on fishing at Hobart Reservoir, which is between Carson City and Lake Tahoe, right? We got a call on the Rod Mob Hotline this week from Stan Zuber. From the Rod Mob Hotline. This is uh, Stan Zuber in uh, Carson City, Nevada. And on Tuesday, myself and two of my friends hiked into Hobart Reservoir, which is located between Carson City, Nevada and Lake Tahoe. And we had a great day of trout fishing. We caught tiger trout, rainbow trout, and brook trout. Each of us caught around 80 fish total, and we were all catch and release. It's a mile hike in with uh, with our float tube, and we had a great day. You can see uh, some video of the catch at troutsneak.com. Keep us posted. Share your catch, tips, gear reviews, and more on our Facebook page. Facebook.com slash RodMob. Valerie Taylor from Crosby Lodge at Pyramid Lake reports that the trollers are killing it right now. They are fishing anywhere from 20 to 60 feet down. Frog colors and brighter colors are still doing well. The east side seems to be the place to go, from needles all the way down to the pyramid. The fishing season closes June 30th and opens back up in October. Convict Lake got another trout plant this week. The hot spots have been the north and south shore, and the top baits are inflated night crawlers and power bait. Fantastic reports are coming from the Bridgeport Reservoir. Jim Reed from Ken's Sporting Goods says it may be the best fishing he's ever seen. Anglers are catching more trout than they can count. At Crowley Lake... Mr. Crowley! The Sacramento perch bite is very good at Layton Springs, Big Hilton, and McGee Bay. The limit is 25 fish, and limits are common. Big browns are still coming out of Upper Twin Lake, and the fishing is improving daily. Hey, Rod Mobbers, help support the show. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and leave a review. On the rivers... 
For an update for the Lower Sac, Klamath, and McLeod Rivers, we spoke with Anthony Carrasco of AC Fly Fishing. Um, the last week or so, I've kind of been a few different places, starting north. Uh, I've been up on the Klamath for the last few days, um, below Iron Gate, fishing the top stretch there. And um, this is the time of year where we get a big salmon fly hatch. A big stone fly comes off, and um, fishing big dry flies. Been pretty good the last few days, the warm days. Been getting a lot of juvenile steelhead. 10 to 14 inch fish and are real eager to come up and eat a dry fly. We've been fishing strictly dry flies up there. That's been a nice change of pace from the, the nymphing that we usually do. You know, we mix in a few of the big adults, 18 to 20 inch fish here and there, but it's been exciting. It's been good, pretty consistent fishing for the most part in the last couple of weeks up there. Um, and that's, again, that's on the Klamath just below Iron Gate. And that's a drift boat fishery. Talk about that real quick. You know, we fish it by drift boat. You're fishing kind of float in the middle of the river and pounding those big dry flies at the banks, you know, under the brush and stuff where those fish are hanging out waiting for a, a big stone fly to come by. So that's kind of the, the program up there. And it's been fun. You know, it's been it's been a good couple of weeks up there. Moving down the lower sack, been on the lower sack quite a bit as well. There's kind of the two main rivers I've been on. Lower sack's been good. The flows are up quite a bit now, 14,000. So uh, it's not too wade-friendly. Like I was telling you guys last week, it's um, a lot better to fish it from a drift boat, access some of the big, long, deep flats and um, where those fish are hanging out and eating right now. We've been seeing some really nice fish, a lot of fish over 20 inches recently. Um, so that's been good. You know, again, that's a nymphing game, indicator fishing. Never been eating anything from stoneflies, caddis in the afternoon, uh, little mayflies on the mornings and evenings, PMDs, kind of a smorgasbord of bugs going on in the sack right now you know if you're not finding them to eat right away it's just a matter of changing your bugs and picking the right one and, and putting it in the right spot so that's been fishing good too that's kind of a, a real consistent year-round fishery for us and you know one of our favorites especially this time of year so that's the lower sack in the Klamath um, been on the McLeod a little bit and that's a walk and wade fishery uh, the trout fishing's been good it's getting a little more technical as we move into the middle you know towards the middle of summer the fish have had a little pressure now, and they're starting to get a little more educated on, on bugs and stuff like that. You know, stealthy approaches, stealthy presentations is kind of the name of the game on that river, especially in the midsummer. A lot of different bugs going on up there, too. You know, mayflies um, starting to see some good golden stones. Um, so like a stimulator like a stimulator and a little dropper, dry dropper setups have been kind of a go-to um, that we've been fishing recently, and um, it kind of says the same for the lower sack. It's fishing pretty similar to what the McLeod is right now. Hatches are, are getting going pretty good. Fishing a lot of dry dropper stuff. I'm just kind of prospecting, not necessarily casting the feeding fish, but uh, kind of prospecting with a dry dropper set up. And that's kind of been our, our ticket to success in the last couple of weeks on those two rivers. The best info I've got um, up to date as of now. Very cool. Um, how would you rate this season so far? It's been great. Because of the light snowpack that we've got up here, we didn't really get much of a runoff, which is kind of scary for later in the summer because the rivers can get low and warm and hopefully not negatively affect the fish too much. But, you know, we've taken advantage of the, the low flows in the spring, uh, which we're usually dealing with runoff this time of year and in the last couple of weeks, but it's it's kind of been non-existent, like I said. So the fish are accessible. The wading's pretty easy. We don't always get that this time of year, so um, we've been taking advantage of it and, you know, reaping the rewards of some good fishing days. What rivers do you think you're, you're going to focus on in the near future, and how can our listeners get a hold of you if they want to book a trip and get on those, some of those trips with you? I'm going to stay focusing on the lower sack. The flows are, are stable now. They should be at around 14000 for a while. And I'm going to be spending probably most of my time there. Um, the Klamath has about a week or two left of the salmon fly, dry fly stuff. Some guys are interested in that. This is, you know, kind of the last week or two to get up there and, and experience that cool dry fly fishing. And then the upper sack in the cloud as well. They should remain consistent. Things can get a little more technical as we get into summer. But, you know, for the beginners, I think, you know, the Klamath and the lower sack, if, if you're not, you don't have a whole lot of experience fly fishing yet, the, the Klamath and the lower sack are probably your best bet. And, again, you know, get a drift boat for a day, learn the fishery, see what the guides like to do, and, uh, you can learn a lot in a day fishing with a guide out here. It's uh, things. It's a lot different than, than your traditional fishing. So 
I suggest, you know, looking up a guide, getting a guide for a day, and um, learning some things from them. If you got some guys out there that want to get a hold of me, I got my website is hcflyfishing.com. You guys can check it out. We got photos and reports up there about weekly now, so check it out. Uh, there's some contact information on there. My number is 209-609-2346. Give me a call and I'd be glad to share. Uh, you guys are just coming up and passing through or whatever. I'd be happy to share some information and what the rivers are doing and uh, what the fishing's like. The hex hatch has started on the Fall River and conditions are good. And rod mobber Kip Larson posted a shot of a 16-inch rainbow he caught last week on the Upper McLeod using a size 12 white-winged caddis dry fly. On the Sacramento River, stripers are still around Calusa and Meridian. Rod mobber Tung Nguyen got into a bunch of shad around Clarksburg. There's lots of shad on the Feather River around Shanghai and down, and some steelhead are still being taken around the hatchery. The evening shad bite on the Yuba is still going strong below the dam. And striper action is still good on the American River. Shad fishing is good, too. They're hanging out around Sunrise and Sailor's Bar. Flows and hatches are good on the Truckee River. Try ant patterns, caddis, and yellow sallies. In the eastern Sierras, Sierra Drifters Guide Service reports that flows are perfect on the East Walker. The Upper Owens is running at 110 cubic feet per second, and nymphing with flashback PTs, olive zebras, San Juan worms, and egg patterns will all get grabs. And now is a great time to fish Hot Creek. The water is in good shape, and there's good mayfly and caddis activity. Woo! Fish! Woo! All right! Catch of the Week. This week, our podcast artwork comes courtesy of Zach Alaniz, who sent in a picture of a fat seven-pound bass he caught at Coyote Reservoir in Morgan Hill. Thanks for sharing, Zach, and congratulations for having this week's Catch Catch of the the Week. week. Well, we're coming up on Father's Day, and many of us have great early memories of fishing with our dads or grandpas. Last week, we asked you, what was your first catch? While 38% of you said your first fish was a trout, 23% had panfish, 15% caught a bass, 6% caught catfish, and the other 18% were a mix of perch, carp, bullhead, rockfish, and even one rod mobber, Tony Varela, helped his grandfather reel in a six-foot sturgeon on the Napa River. One poor rod mobber told us her first catch was her index finger. She said she tried casting, whipped it back too hard, and caught her finger. Ouch. That'll put you off fishing. (laughs) We also got some great comments back from folks sharing memories of their first catch. Rod mobber Stephanie Barnett Cheney says, I can remember my father taking the whole family fishing up at our local lake, Lake Berryessa. We didn't have a boat, so we walked the shoreline at the public day use. I was about six or seven. I was fishing. My father walked by me and told me that I needed to stop casting the weeds that were there in the water. About 10 minutes later, I yelled at my father to go get the net. I had hooked a four pound largemouth bass. My father never told me how to fish again. I think my first catch was my sister's finger. (laughs) Cast and caught her. All right, now for this week's poll question. We all like a fish that puts up a good fight. Our question this week is, pound for pound, what Northern California species do you think puts up the best fight? Head on over to rodmob.com and cast your vote. Upcoming events you won't want to miss. Here's the Rod Mob calendar. Coming up next week on Thursday, June 20th, Randy Pringle, the fishing instructor, will be at Fisherman's Warehouse in Fresno talking techniques for big summer bass. The seminar starts at 6.15 p.m. Also on Thursday, June 20th, Vance Staplin of Vance's Tackle will discuss downrigging techniques starting at 6 p.m. at Fisherman's Warehouse in Manteca. June 22nd is the Bridgeport Trout Tournament, an open derby with several categories. Funds generated from this event will help provide more trout for the Bridgeport Reservoir and the East Walker River. Contact 760-932-7525. Also on Saturday, June 22nd, is Cast for Kids at Lake Oroville. This event is designed to provide children with disabilities the opportunity to enjoy a quality outdoor recreational experience through the sport of fishing. Take to the water with Cast for an unforgettable morning of fishing and boating. For more info, call 530-534-2340. And at New Malonis on June 22nd, it's the Russ Fott Second Annual Memorial Kokanee Derby. For more info, call 209-745-4246. 
Coming up on June 27th, Paul Kelpikoff of Central Sierra Adventures will give a seminar on kokanee and trout downrigging techniques starting at 6.15 p.m. at Fisherman's Warehouse in Fresno. And Dave Mirke of Rip Their Lips Off Guide Service will be at Fisherman's Warehouse in Manteca talking river salmon at 6 p.m. And June 29th is Trout Fest at Hot Creek Hatchery in Mammoth Lakes from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Bring your family to Trout Fest for a free, fun-filled day of fishing activities and fascinating facts about California native trout. Trout Fest is hosted by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Contact 559-765-4824. For details on these and other upcoming events, check out our events page at rodmob.com. And if you have an event you'd like us to mention, just drop us a line at fishon at rodmob.com. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks, everyone, for all your reports. We've got a big batch of Rod Mob decals going out to Rod Mobbers all over Northern California for sharing fishing reports with us. Wonder how you can get hooked up with a free weather-resistant decal? Well, it's easy. Just share your reports with us next time you go out fishing. Post your report to our Facebook page, shoot us an email at fishon at rodmob.com, or leave us a message on the Rod Mob hotline, 855-RODMOB1. And if you're interested in contributing regularly to our website with reports or fishing tips, sort of like being a Rod Mob staff writer, we'd love to talk to you. Please drop us a line at fishon at rodmob.com. We're also looking for a few sales-minded Rod Mob fans who might be able to help us get some advertising opportunities going to help fund the show. If you're interested, email us for more info at fishon at rodmob.com. Thanks for listening. Happy Father's Day. Have a great week. And don't forget to tell a friend about the Rod Mob. And until next time, Rod Rod Mob. Mob. Keep us posted. What do you know about fishing in the first place? When did you ever catch anything? Fifteen years ago. (laughs) I caught 300 pounds of blubber.